Hello and welcome back. Uh, we are in week 7. We are looking at chapters 16 to 18 uh, from book 2 and in this section the key uh, narrative instant would be the marriage of Lucy Minette to Charles Darnay and its impact on the father. So we look at the incidents uh, in the run up to that uh, event. Now uh, if you remember uh, the earlier session in which I was discussing the presence of the spy John Barsad at the wine shop, uh, he does give them an important information about uh, the, uh, the uh, kind of impending marriage of Lucy Manette to Charles Darney and he also offers them significant uh, information in the sense that he tells them that Darney is related to Marky Evermonde and Marky Evermonde uh, is responsible for the death of Gaspard, uh, someone that they all know and sympathize with because Gaspard was arrested for uh, the murder of Marky Evermonde Monday and was put to death in a cruel fashion. So this would uh, lead everybody to uh, hate the Marquis even more than they already do. Uh, and um, once they hear about this piece of information from Barca, they are uh, shocked as well as um, they puzzle. They are puzzled. They they wonder whether there is truth to Barca's testimony. But we know as readers that there is, uh, in fact, a lot of truth to Barca's testimony. And um, uh, Defarge is uh, uh, kind of saddened by this uh, information because he realizes that that uh, this association, this association between uh, Marquis Evramonde, the monster who was murdered by Gaspard, and um, Charles Darnay, the man that uh, Dr. Manette's um, daughter is going to marry, would kind of uh, put. Uh, Charles Darnay and Dr. Manette on the other side of two uh, opposing parties that we have in this particular uh, moment in the novel. So we have the people who are against the Marquis such as the Defarges and then we have people um, who are um, you know uh, the, the peasantry of uh, France. So we have two opposing groups here. the presentry versus the marquee. The marquee comes to symbolize all the aristocratic uh, uh, class and um, this relationship that Lucy is going to forge with Charles Darnay puts Darnay and by implication Dr. Minnett on the marquee side and that is very unfortunate. Darnay and Lucy Minnett. So, the Defarges are on the side of the peasantry, on the side of people who want to bring down the aristocrats and um, therefore Defarge is upset that Darnay will also be uh, implicated um, in the crime committed by the aristocracy as a big group, as a big class and uh, he is affected by this knowledge. And uh, Defarge, Madame Defarge says that if it does come and that it's referring to the French Revolution, if it does come while we live to see it, I hope for her sake, Lucy's sake, destiny will keep her husband out of France. It's better for Charles Darnay to stay out of France rather than to come here because if he comes he will be condemned. So that is the indirect message that Defarge offers here uh, with, um, in her conversation uh, with her husband. And Defarge tries to uh, plead for mercy, uh, plead for some kind of understanding on the part of his wife. And here we do see a, a, a kind of a softer side to Defarge. And he says, after all her sympathy for Monsieur her father and herself, her husband's name should be prescribed under your hand at this moment by the side of the infernal dogs who has just left us. So he is asking her a question. And he says, you know, we did uh, feel a, a huge sympathy for her father, Dr. Manette, 
and her daughter who also suffered as an orphan uh, in the absence of her uh, mother and father who was imprisoned in the Bastille for 18 long years. So, we were very sympathetic towards this family and um, and, and he says that uh, her husband's name um, to be uh, to include her husband's name in that knitting register is not quite um, you know appropriate. So, that is the indirect question that Defarge is trying to raise and it would, it, would you not consider um, to leave his name out of your register. So, that is the plea that Defarge has to his wife um, and he says it is not fair to have Darnay's name alongside the name of John Barsad and other people who did commit heinous crimes such as Marquis Evermonde and in and, and other people who are associated with him, the aristocrats, the nobility who oppressed and suppressed the peasantry. So, that is the question of Defarge and look at the response that Madame Defarge offers. She says, stranger things than that will happen when it does come. Stranger things than um, the name of uh, Barsad and Darnay being knitted together one after the other, uh, you know, will happen. Th this is nothing uh, to have these two names together is nothing. Str things that are stranger will, more strange than this will happen. And, uh, um, in, in France when it does come when the revolution comes um, I have them both here of a certainty and they are both here for their merits that is enough and she says that if Barsat's name is in my knitting register, if I have registered his name in my uh, register, uh, then he is here because of all the crimes that he did commit against the people of France. And if Darnay is also there, and he is there uh, absolutely um, because he has committed uh, crimes, he has merits for being here. And that is a very um, uh, kind of awkward uh, uh, answer that we have. The reasoning is not very, very clear clear because we know the readers know and um, other people in the story know that Darnay is absolutely innocent. And if he is innocent, how can he merit his uh, place in the knitting register, the register of death that um, De Madame Defarge is knitting? The reasoning is not clear, it is skewed. Reasoning is faulty. But Madame Defarge thinks that there is a reason. Her reason is that Darnay belongs to the race, the lineage, the family of Marquis Evermonde, and the Marquis Evermonde family is uh, looked at as a unit, not as individual. So, an individual represents the family, and the family's faults are uh, made responsible in the individual. So, her, she has a different kind of reasoning. So, the entire class is condemned, the class of aristocrats is condemned for the crime of uh, certain people in that class. We come to chapter 17 which is titled One Night and this night refers to the night that uh, the father and the daughter um, uh, talk about uh, the past, talk about uh, their aspirations out of life and um, Lucy and um, Dr. Manette have a chat before the marriage of Lucy the next night, the next day. And she tells her father very innocently that if I had never seen Charles, my father, I should have been quite happy with you. Uh, and he smiled at her unconscious admission that she would have been unhappy without uh, Charles having seen him and replied, my child, you did see him and it is Charles. If it, ha if it had not been Charles, it would have been another or if it had been no other, I should have been the cause and then the dark part of my life would have cast its shadow beyond myself and would have fallen on you. So, Lucy is utterly innocent in the claim that she uh, makes to her father which is that if she had not seen Charles then she would not have thought about marriage at all and the father who is more mature who is uh, the more experienced of the two says that if it is not Charles it would have been somebody else with whom you would have fallen in love. This is natural, um, this is uh, an expected 
did uh, you know part for you and if it had been nobody then he says that I would have been the reason behind your disruption of the romantic trajectory the domestic trajectory and that would mean that my dark past is affecting your bright future and then I would have uh, found fault with myself I would have been guilty and I would have been depressed so uh, he says that it is good and, and and that he is glad that she is marrying Charles uh, Darnay and this is the illustration for that meeting that particular night before Lucy Minette would be married to Charles Darnay so this is the scene um, that is uh, you know presented in the illustration as taking place under the plane tree the plane tree has a lot of symbolic significance it has the blessing of God itself it's almost Edenic in the garden And this scene is also very important because for the first time we have Dr. Manet talk about his past. Which is his Bastille days. And he says that when I was in prison I used to think about um, your presence. I used to think about you taking me out of prison. So he says that I have imagined her in the moonlight coming to me taking me out to show me that the home of a married life was full of her loving remembrance of her last father my picture was in her room and I was in her prayers her life was active cheerful useful but my poor history pervaded it all so he says that um, when I was in the Bastille uh, I used to imagine uh, you taking me out of prison and taking me to your home, your married home and in your home I could see that my picture was there and uh, I could see that you led a very active, cheerful, productive uh, life but then uh, my past, my history did uh, offer a kind of uh, a tinge of um, a sadness to your life. So uh, he almost envisions um, the present and the future of Lucy Minette uh, in his past. So it's a, it's a kind of a fantastical scene here. And he further says that, um, and she showed me her children, said the doctor of Beauvais, and they had heard of me and had been taught to pity me. When they passed a prison of the state, they kept far from its frowning walls and looked up at its bars and spoke in whispers. She could never deliver me. I imagine that she always brought me back after showing me such things. So this is the fancy <coughs> of Dr. Manette at the Bastille in his past. So he says that in my imagination when I was in the Bastille Lucy Minette my daughter did uh, uh, kind of uh, show me her children and sometimes the children when they passed by the prison they used to kind of move as far away from the prison as possible and they looked up at the bars and they spoke in whispers uh, and um, the implication is that they tried to see their grandfather who was there and, um, and he says that even though my daughter could uh, um, uh, you know take me out she could not fully deliver me from this prison so there are lots of themes here which is that the prison is a constant presence <coughs> even though you can step out of the prison now and then you cannot get rid of its influence um, you know uh, fully so that theme is uh, coded in this fantastical scene uh, uh, where um, Dr. Manette talks about his uh, past and uh, the other uh, foreshadowing that we have here in the scene is the foreshadowing of Charles Darnay's imprisonment. Those of you who have uh, read the novel would know that Charles Darnay will be imprisoned uh, in France and um, Lucy Manette would uh, come to the street outside the prison and she would look up at its bars hoping that Darnay would get a glimpse of her and sometimes she also brought her child with her so that he could uh, take a glimpse of both of them. So that foreshadowing of 
things to come is coded in this past scene of Dr. Manat. Um, so, it is a, it's a kind of a, a, a combination of the past and the future uh, and the overall ideological um, perspective that we need to draw from this particular uh, uh, scene is that prisons are a constant um, presence in uh, a tale of two cities. Um, if, if someone is out of the prison, then there is always another person who would go in and people are always in prisons either metaphorically or literally and the state is constantly controlling um, its uh, citizens. So, that is the uh, ideological uh, aspect that comes to mind when we read this excerpt. What are the changes the marriage would affect uh, literally uh, not much, not much because the marriage was to make no change in their place of residence. They had been able to extend it by taking to themselves the upper rooms formerly belonging to the apocryphal invisible lodger and they desired nothing more. So, they are not going to change their Soho Square residence, they are just going to extend, expand their home. In the same place and how do they do it? They are going to rent uh, the upper rooms that um, were thought to have belo belonged to uh, an invisible lodger, somebody who was thought to stay there. They are going to take those rooms and they uh, desired nothing more. There is hardly any change uh, brought about by the marriage of Lucy Minette to uh, Charles Darnay. <coughs> Darnay would come to live with them and that is it. This chapter is titled Nine Days and um, it is a very important chapter in the sense that uh, for the first time we see uh, the lapse of um, Dr. Manette being uh, there for nine days. It is not a momentary lapse, it is a prolonged lapse and he goes back to the state of mind in which he was first found in the wine shop garret. So, why does that happen? Why does the doctor suffer a, a relapse? Um, and the reason is uh, there in the conversation that Charles Darnay has with the doctor. So, why does it affect him? Charles Darnay reveals his real identity. And the reader does not know it yet. Um, this is a secret conference that the um, uh, son-in-law and the uh, uh, and the father-in-law have uh, in private. So the door of the doctor's room opened, and he came out with Charles Darnay. He was deadly pale. He was so deadly pale, which had not been the case when they went in together, that no vestige of color was to be seen in his face. But in the composure of his manner, he was unaltered, except that to the shrewd glance of Mr. Lorry, it disclosed some shadowy indication that the old air of avoidance and dread had lately passed over him like a cold wind. So, we need a bit of context for this excerpt which is that if you remember uh, the proposal scene uh, the chapter titled Two Promises where uh, Darnay was about to offer him some information about his real identity and the doctor refuses to let him proceed. He says that do give me your information when Lucy Minnett has actually accepted his propo your proposal and that you get married. He says that tell me your news on the day of your marriage and that day has come and the doctor has had a conversation in private in his room with Darnay and when he comes out he is deadly pale. He is so startled by the information that Darnay has offered and um, there was no color on his face, but then he is able to compose himself. There is composure yet um, even though um, one can see that he is affected and Mr. Laurie is able to um, you know guess, able to guess, uh, able to find out that 
um, Mr. Uh, Dr. Manet is affected by some news uh, because there is a, a kind of a shadowy indication of um, the disaster, the relapse that is going to come indicated in his face. There is an air of avoidance, he tries to avoid the glance of uh, his friends and um, it is as if he has recently uh, been very much frightened. So, all these facial cues um, uh, are there in, in, in the visage of Dr. Manette and his friend Mr. Laurie is able to notice all these clues and he says that it is as if there is a cold wind that has passed over his face. So, that is how the third person narrator puts it the impact that uh, Dr. Manette um, uh, uh, re reveals on his face. Lucy and Charles Darney are married and then they go on their honeymoon leaving the father behind. The father is supposed to join them after a, a few days, after a week or so and Dr. Manette is left uh, to the care of Miss Pross and Mr. Laurie and one day Miss Pross uh, notices that um, Dr. Manette is in his room making shoes and she is shocked uh, out of her life and uh, she says Miss Bross with a terrified uh, face was at his ear at Mr. Laurie's ear. Oh me, oh me, all is lost, she cried, wringing her hands. What is to be told to Lady Bird? He does not know me and is making shoes. What is to be told to Lucy? How am I going to um, talk to Lucy, uh, my Lady Bird? He is um, you know, out of his senses. He is making shoes as he used to do when he was in the Bastille, when he was in the wine shop garret. So, he has suffered a great relapse and uh, both Mr. Laurie and Miss Pross decide to keep this uh, a secret from Lucy and uh, they uh, in, you know between the both of them they uh, keep a guard over um, Dr. Manette. They try to talk to him, they try to uh, act uh, quite normally and they try to get him out of his uh, you know uh, um, you know mental uh, uh, depression. And and um, they decide not to inform Lucy about the relapse that um, Dr. Manet has suffered and they decide to recover the mental health of Dr. Manet um, you know before she arrives before Dr. Manet is going to join the two of them in their journey. Thank you for watching, uh, I will continue in the next session.